Hello everyone, I am Diana Cobo and I'm a multimedia artist. That was perfect, also hilarious because <laughs> right when you stopped, like literally as soon as you stopped, the screen froze there for a second and it was so cute. <laughs> I love, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing pretty good, um, considering like all the fuckery that's going on, I feel fine considering, I mean, you know, like I'm a hermit naturally, so right. this hasn't been like a huge adjustment. I actually thought about you last night because somebody texted me, like an industry friend in New York, and he was like, oh, hey, how have you been? And this was at like, probably like nine o'clock at night, my time, so like midnight, your time. And he was like, do you have a second mm -hmm. or third check-in? And I just was like, I woke up in a funk yesterday and I just like wasn't in the mood and then I went to Whole Foods and it was like nine o'clock and like, I just didn't want to. And it was late right. and I'm like, I don't feel like talking. I know like, I know he was gonna wanna talk work shit too. It wasn't just gonna be like, how are you? Like, and so I was like, honestly, I wrote him back and I was like, I'm just like not in a mental space. Like I need to shut down for the day and turn off. And I was thinking about you because I feel right. like you're so good at that. Really? You think so? <laughs> I mean, I think you're like, I get I get it because we're the same. Like you push yourself until like you're like about to collapse and then you're like, okay, I got to take a break. But I feel like you're good about vocalizing yeah. people like, you know, even with this, you were like, hey, I didn't forget about you. I'm just like shutting off for a couple days. So I feel like you're good about communicating to other people. For sure. I think more than ever, I feel like communication is key and being transparent with one another is key because everyone is handling the situation so differently in many different capacities. And so like with me, I just had to let people know, yo, you're crossing my boundary. This is my boundary. I just need some time. Let me kind of adjust to what is going on. And then when I come back, I'll be ready to talk to you and be there for you. Um, but I think it's important to give yourself that time, especially when things like this happen where we don't know how to handle it, especially mentally. Yeah. How has that been for you? Like, I know you were usually so slammed with jobs. Are you still like just as busy as ever? Or has it kind of slowed up a little bit? It's definitely slowed up a bit, um, but I'm not mad at it. <laughs> I feel like in retrospect, like in the grand scheme of things, I feel like this is what we all need. And especially me, um, Joe Fresh Goods actually tweeted something the other day. He was like, I didn't realize how addicted I was to being busy until this happened. And I was like, yo, that's so, that's so true. Like I didn't realize how much adrenaline I was getting from being constantly swamped and being stressed out and being um, constantly busy and stuff. And it wasn't until like this happened where I just had to really sit with myself and understand that my habits, especially when it comes to work, aren't the healthiest. And so now I'm giving myself this space and this time to really kind of reevaluate how I'm working and how I want to approach it moving forward. So that way it's like on a much more, it's, it's just much more healthier because I feel like us, like our generation is just so addicted to working and being busy. It's almost like a validation. Like if we're busy, we're validated. Yeah. For Whereas sure. that should not be the case. I realized last week I was getting into like this little bit of a depression funk and it was totally because my calendar was empty. Like I'm so used to mm. just being on autopilot and like having to go to this meeting and that meeting and like I just have everything laid out for me and now not having any kind right. of schedule, it just was like, drain like oddly draining where you think it would be the opposite, but it's true. It's like I thrive in chaos. Yeah, we experience such restlessness when we have nothing to do and then it becomes a game of, oh man, I feel guilty because I'm not doing anything or I'm not doing enough, especially if you see it on social media, like if you see all your friends hustling and stuff and you have one day off, you sit there and you sulk about it because you're like, oh, I'm supposed to be busy all the time. I'm supposed to keep moving and bustling or whatever. But then like, you know, going back to this, where it's beyond our control and we don't know when it's going to end it's like okay so how are we going to approach the situation now like we have to sit still we have to stay put jobs are getting canceled brands aren't going to spend any money right now in certain you know departments so it's like what do we do now and now more than ever we're having to bank on our solitude and and on ourselves to really carry ourselves throughout this epidemic because we don't we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow or a month from now. Um, so we're experiencing a lot of uncertainty, but then again, on the bright side of things is that we're kind of going back to the base 
lipstick on everything. You know, now we're like, okay, so I have all this time now. There's no excuse as to why I can't work on passion projects or, you know, adopting a new skill or reading more, educating ourselves more, which are all the things that I've been doing now that I have the time and I can't sit here and be like, oh, I don't have time for that. I got all the time. <laughs> right. I know. It's funny. I read a meme earlier that was like, Corona's giving us excuse not to do all the things we weren't going to do anyways. And I was like, oh, I've had this, one of my friends told me, I know, it's so bad. Um, my friend told me about this book called, I think it's called Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. I'm probably messing this all up. But I was like, oh, I really want to read that. It's about like mastering your mind so you can unlock stuff. But I haven't yet mastered my mind because mm -hmm. I haven't read it. So I haven't convinced <laughs> myself to read it yet. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> honestly, I some of the practice that I've been sharing with my friends is, I mean, first of all, like our brain is just, it can be so cruel and it can be so nice at the same time. And our mind really dictates a lot of our actions, our moods, our decisions, all that, right? Um, so we're constantly like on this pursuit of trying to control our mind. And we get so like overwhelmed about it because it's like, it's it's a bigger task at hand. But some of the things that I have been telling my friends that if they're trying to find solitude or if they're trying to start their day on a better note, do your morning pages. And that morning pages is like one to two hours or even like 30 minutes or even 10 minutes out of your day. If you're just sitting with yourself, either journaling, if you're just listing out 10 things that you're grateful for, or if you're setting intentions and affirmations, that is an opportunity for you to really control your mind and set the tone for the rest of the day. Do you do that every day? I try to, yeah. I, I started doing this like at the beginning of the year. And now more than ever, I'm really heavily relying on my morning time, especially my meditation. So I just been waking up at 6 a.m., trying to wake up at 6 a.m. every day. Um, and I'll do like my morning pages. I'll set my intentions. I'll even journal like how I'm feeling. I'm even documenting this time. Like, yo, this is wild. Like New York City has like over 20,000 positive cases and I'm writing that in my journal. So maybe like six months from now, I'm looking back on those moments and I can really appreciate the amount of growth I've had since then. It's funny because obviously like I'm laying in bed, instead of doing my morning journaling, I'm laying in bed on Instagram, like an irresponsible millennial. Um, but I, this morning <laughs> I was scrolling and I saw you had posted and you were like something about waking up and it was 7 a.m. here and you had posted four hours ago. And I literally was like, wow, she is up very early. First, that first week, I wouldn't even lie, that shit was tough. Like I was waking up that late. There was days that I would wake up at 1 p.m. Um, there were days I'd wake up at nine and I was getting so upset with myself, but I, I had to stop because I'm like, I'm readjust, I'm adjusting to something completely different now. Like this may take weeks, this may take months, whatever the case may be, but I need to give myself a little leniency here and, and approach, my, approach myself with a little bit more of compassion because I don't know how dire or how big the situation is. So that first week I was just like sleeping in, bumming it, and it wasn't until like the second week where I was like, okay, let me start implementing some sort of structure because again, I don't know how long this is gonna go for and I need to protect my sanity. So, and then after that happened, I started to really push myself to make sure that I was staying on top of at least my productivity or at least some kind of routine that brings a peace of mind. Because as we all know, like staying home all fucking day is, is driving us nuts. Yeah, what is your routine now? Like, what's like, I know there's no such thing as a typical day in quarantine, but what's that look like you for you now? I mean, now it's just, like I said, morning pages in the morning. Like, normally I would try to wake up by 6 a.m. I'm taking maybe one to two hours of just to myself, whether that's doing my morning pages, my meditation. Um, I have an art tutor now, so she's been giving me things to do so I can study. Um, and then after those one or two hours are done, I'll jump into whatever client work I have that I can still work at. Um, Cause luckily being that I'm a digital artist, I can do a lot of digital work. Um, so a lot of my, my gigs are online, are digital based. So I've been able to kind of keep myself busy in that aspect. Um, and then afterwards, like accountability, like I would try to work out with my friend or, you know, cook something or whatever. Um, 
Whereas the before, there was a lot more freedom for me to like do whatever. Now I'm really like, okay, here's a structure. I'm whether I whether that's like time blocking or schedule blocking or whatever the, whatever it's called. I'm doing that, um, and I feel like that's been helping me a lot implementing some sort of structure. Oh, even though I hate structure. <laughs> no, I uh, same. And I actually went through. I'm like. This is, I bet you so many people are gonna connect with this because I went through the exact same timeline. Like the first week was so rough for me. Like day one, I was like, okay, I work from home here and there so I can figure this out, whatever. Yeah. Day like three, four, I was like, yo, what the fuck? Like I just like, I was, it was bad. And then like week two was when the same thing. I was like, all right, I need to get myself into a routine. Like it's gotten to the point where I like before bed will write down my schedule for the day is even as little as like what time I'm gonna eat lunch or like I have a, like a spin bike in here. I'm like, okay, 4 p.m. I'm taking a Peloton class on TV. Like I'm scheduling that stuff because if I don't, it's just like, what am I gonna do? Sit on the couch and watch Tiger King? Okay, a good show, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, everyone's been raving about Tiger King. That's hilarious. Well, you know, it is from the state of our people. So I feel like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not surprised. Like, Florida men and women, like, they just don't surprise me anymore. I was like, this had to be a Florida story. Of course, of course. <laughs> I guess I'm a few things I'm curious about specifically because like, I think you're just in such a unique position versus a lot of other people I've talked to. Like a lot of my friends in the industry, especially in the music industry, you know, we're working remotely and we're, we're trying to figure out how to pivot from in-person events to digital stuff and like things like that. But mm -hmm. since you work with such like a wide range of clients, have you found yourself like, I, I find myself frustrated recently at like some of the inbound emails. like people's tone or people just like expectations of like delivery and not really like even checking to see how you are and I'm curious like have you had to make any decisions or maybe decide not to not to take on certain work or to work with certain people during this time um no if anything I've become more collaborative in the sense you know like I'm, I'm much more like open minding to, to talking with people more whether that's like the fellow art community or it's like talking to you, like whereas to before I wasn't as collaborative, like I would be way more hesitant because of like the load of work that I have and I'm not able to um, focus on those things, even though those are things that are healthy and are really great for artists. So I would say now I'm just much more collaborative and I haven't had to decline anything. If anything, the clients that I do have and the projects that we do have at hand, we're trying to figure out how to shape this narrative to, to be more relevant now, um, because these are projects that happened months ago. And now that we're trying to debut it and push forward, we're like, okay, this is not the time to be talking about X, Y, and Z, but maybe if we shift the narrative a, a bit to be more relevant to now, or if we're able to, to make that call to action to be a donation charity type deal, um, so those are things I'm facing now, and I'm just really fortunate that I haven't really experienced anything negatively, but then again, I think that's been up to me to ensure that all the experiences that I have moving forward are positive and have something conducive that comes out of it. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because I know like you've shared somewhat publicly sometimes um, a few times where you have turned down a project because it just didn't align with who you yeah. are, your morals. And I think that we're shifting into a time now where it's becoming harder and harder for creatives to turn down projects because of the situation we're in right yeah. now. And so um, there might be a time where even myself, you know, you find yourself sacrificing something you don't necessarily feel comfortable doing, but you feel like we're not in a position any longer. So it's definitely, I think, an uncomfortable time for a lot of people, especially people who are business owners. Like you were talking about earlier, like the quarantine has made us all realize like, either how good or bad we are with time management and you know whether we thrive at a still pace or thrive when we're busy. I guess we realize we thrive when we're busy, but also mm -hmm. has made us realize like what we don't need. Like clothing wise, I have no yeah. desire to online shop. I don't need these clothes for what? Who am I seeing? Like, you know, going to eat at Nobu. <laughs> I don't need to go to Nobu. Like I've saved so much money. I feel like after this, it's gonna make me like rethink, like, do I actually need that shit? Like probably not. Exactly.
Exactly. Our relationship with materialistic things are definitely going to shift. Um, and I think we're just going to become like better savers at the end of this, which thank God, because girl. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I, yeah. It'd be a mess. <laughs> no, I feel like so there's obviously this is very unfortunate circumstances that nobody would have predicted, but I think that there is like mm-hmm. in some extent a lot of us needed to hit the pause button and so this is forcing us to do that. Um and there is good coming out of it to your point. I think people are gonna hone into their skills. I think they're gonna take a moment and think about what they really want. I think we're gonna get a lot more um thoughtful and mindful with how we're spending our dollars and how we're spending our time at the end of the day. So, um, for sure, for sure. Yeah. There's a bigger lesson to learn here. And I just hope that we all take it in and sit with it and be at peace with it and just be ready to, to come out full force, you know, listen, get the Google doc started. Let's collab on our jet ski vacation. <laughs> I'm so down. I'm so down. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much for chatting. I'm so excited um, that you still are able to do all your art from home and stay inspired. And the fact that you found peace after 15 days of mastering the skill. (laughs) Thank you so much for your time. You too. Bye.